Mark, Biso, Nadim, uh, you guys must come out and uh, tell us who you support next week so that <laughs> we have this conversation <laughs> from a uh, declared point of view. <laughs> hey, Podcast Friday! <laughs> The guys are here, the guys are here, the guys are here. Biso's here, Nadim is here, Mark will be on the phone today, and there's a lot to discuss. Kaiser Chiefs, um, this is, here, hear me out. You know, once coaches are approached, once coaches have had conversations, then, you know, all the media, we jump on them. Uh, but Chiefs have kept a very tight lid on who they're talking to, you know, which is not the norm. Normally, we'd know. Normally, Mazzara would have broken the story. Normally, you know, Vili would have broken the story. But this time around... Uh, they've kept a very good lid on top of their coach searching. But there's two coaches that have been mentioned in the news, right? We'll go into those two coaches and I'll find out from the gents what they think because there's no better person to get into the stats and, and what the coaches have done than the Podcast Friday team. So we'll get into that. Also, Bafana Bafana, preliminary squad, two big games coming up. Zimbabwe, Nigeria. The preliminary squad has been announced. Zakele Lepasa is not on it. Mabasa is not on it. Mufugeng is on it, alongside two brand new names. What do you guys think of the preliminary squad? Then the big conversation, defender of the season. We've done uh, midfielder, we've done player, we've done, well, goalkeepers, pretty evident if you ask me. But what about defense? Who has the best defense? And lastly, Europe, particularly in the Premier League, are considering scrapping VAR. They're saying, some corners are saying, this thing is not working. It's slowing down the game. It is taking the emotions out of the game as far as celebrations are concerned because you've got to score, then you've got to wait. And by the time they say, yes, it's a goal or not, then you need to rethink or reconfigure your emotions again to celebrate. So it's taking away from the emotions of the game. Still, some of the decisions, even though this VAR are not correct and they're saying we'd rather have human error. And this is something that we are crying about saying we want it here in South Africa. We're saying, please bring it tomorrow. Based on what we saw at AFCON, I would want it to. Because African referees at the Africa Cup of Nations under CAF were superb with it. They were fantastic with it. But what do the guys in the studio think? Because the same referees in South Africa, in South Africa, that seem not to exactly know the interpretations of the law when they are judging in the middle of that field, are going to be the same ones that are in charge of VAR. It's not going to be foreign referees. It's going to be the very same guys that you say week in, week out, don't understand the law. How will they understand it any differently when there's VAR? Those are the conversations you're going to be having. And I look forward to interacting with you on 86 2160 WhatsApp on 60 It's exactly 12 after the hour 6. The guys are here. Let me introduce them to you. And of course, coming all the way from a telephone is former Cosmos, Vitz and Morocco Swallows midfielder, Mark Haskins. Hey, Mark. How are you doing, sir? I'm always good, man. I mean, I, I miss seeing your polite face. You have the most polite face I've ever seen. So when it's not in studio, <laughs> you break my heart, Mark. Hey, man, it's, it's, it's been rough this week, man. Uh, it's uh, the flu. I got the bout of the flu. The flu is no joke that's going around. It really isn't. I hope you take care of yourself, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Biso Snaps makes a return last week. He wasn't uh, in the chair. Who do we have? Oh, we're Junior Kanye. Yes. We're yes. Junior Kanye last, next, last week. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you so much, Ma'a, and uh, good evening to the listeners of the number one sports show in South Africa. And of course, what would we be without Nadim Lukele? Hey, Nadim. Hey, Andy. It's been a good week. I listened to all your shows this week, specifically the one about uh, with Ronan Williams. <laughs> it raises so many conversations, but it's good to be here. Le- let me ask you then. Ronan Williams says that. You know, the, the, that huge debate of, about whether it was a goal or not, that Aziz key strike, the fact that it was ruled, whether it's an actual goal or not, doesn't matter now. It was ruled no goal, right? Yeah. He says he touched that. Mm. That makes it a fantastic save. Of course, one of the greatest saves. It makes it literally one of the greatest saves. Mark, what mm. do you think of that? The fact that Ronan Williams touched that ball. Well, I mean, obviously you go back to, to AFCON, I don't know if you remember the save he made against uh, Capa Verde, where he left the striker uh, in disbelief, where the striker couldn't even believe uh, believe that he got a touch onto it, onto the crossbar. I remember that, yeah. And got up. Um, so, I mean, we've seen him make some out-of-this-world saves, and he makes it look so easy. He does it so nonchalantly. Um, you know, and I think that's what makes it so difficult because even if you look at these penalty saves, it, it's 
sometimes he says it and it's like it it means nothing. It's like it's what he does on a daily basis. And I think that's why body language is everything. Most strikers don't know what to do purely because he makes it look like it's, ah, ah well, it's just one of those things. Um, and so, yes, even that, you know, getting a touch onto that was phenomenal. Um, obviously, it's still debatable whether the ball crossed the line or not. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting a touch onto that, uh, onto the crossbar makes it a, a phenomenal save. Indeed, indeed. Well, guys, there's a lot to talk about. Um, let's perhaps start from the bottom here. A conversation that's been had in the Premier League. There's going to be a vote on scrapping VAR. All the teams are going to get together. They're going to make their thoughts and their opinions over whether VAR gets scrapped or not, or they keep it. Now, we've seen teams already that have come on board and saying, you know what, we're not for this thing. We'd rather the pure emotions of what... Um, football is supposed to be we'd rather the human error i'm going to quote here from wolves uh, this was sky sports that posted this wolves listing their negative consequences of var it says it impacts on goal celebration and the spontaneous passion that makes football special it also says it's frustrating and confusing inside stadiums due to the lengthy var checks and poor communication it goes on uh, to say that a constant discourse about VR decisions often overshadowing the match itself and tarnishing the reputation of the league. There's a long list of the reasons why Wolves say this thing should be scrapped. But I'd like to hear from you guys. In the way they do it, I would vote against it because these people are not able to use it properly. I don't think that VAR is the problem, but the way we use it is the problem. So if you, you, know, you cannot change the people, obviously that's clear. Um, you need them, um, and so then I would say, yeah, I would be, I would vote for scrapping VAR. That's from Klopp himself, the Liverpool mentor and coach. Outgoing says he would want to scrap it, Biso. I think he said something there that's really important, Ma'a, that VAR is not the problem. The problem is the people that are using it. I mean, we saw what happened at, at AFCON. So many people were praising the, the, the way that VAR was used in that tournament. Every decision seemed to be being judged on the same scale. The problem with what I've seen is with, with uh, the Premier League, for example, is that there's too many gray areas with VAR. There's decisions that in one game are a foul, in another game are not a foul. You get decisions that get overturned because it touched someone's hand, but then is it ball to hand is it hand to ball there's too many gray areas in var and that has caused this what was speaking about earlier that you know sometimes you watch a goal go in and even though you deep down you know it's a goal there's still that element of but i can't celebrate yet because var might just overturn it so it's really killing that emotion you, you hear it in the stadiums even when you're watching games and a goal goes in fans celebrate but it's a half-hearted celebration then they wait for var to confirm it then you have a second are you then anti-var I, I'm not anti-VAR. I'm anti the way that it is used in the Premier League. I thought that as I said it time and time again. I've never been one for VAR. Um, I just believe that the human element is part of the game, and I don't think uh, we can take away from that. My my rationale has always been the same way a striker can miss the.
way it's used. Uh, no, uh, yeah, exactly. The way it is. Uh, if you are, if you are saying improve people, let it get experiences. We are, we are gonna end up saying we don't need referees. Players must just play. We'll see if it's a goal or not. Because <laughs> again, <laughs> we see so many things, especially in the PSL. We are seeing bad decisions. Like I was telling you now that the NetBank Cup final is going to decide it by a referee. You know that uh, once it will be a red card or someone is not supposed to get a red card. I think VAR is correct. Use it correctly. Like the CAF, CAF Africa and Cup of Nations showed us that if you use it correctly, it's perfect for football. The World Cup also showed the same, saw the same thing. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, there's still plenty to talk about. Kaiser Chiefs have two coaches that are said to be the front runners to take over Kevin Johnson at the end of the season. Plus, they've got something special at Chiefs happening this week weekend itumelen kune to be honored it's exactly 24 after the r6 on the mighty metro fm you're locked on to sports that amplified with andy it's podcast friday the gents are here gents let's get into one more conversation here uh bafana bafana preliminary squad announced as is tradition now with hugo bruce announces a preliminary squad then comes on to give us um the squad that'll face nigeria and zimbabwe two crucial matches these some omissions there i think it's notable that Zakila Lepasa doesn't make the squad. It's notable that Lebohila Mufukeng has made the squad. What did you make of what you saw, Piso? Um, I'm, I'm happy with the squad. The preliminary squad when yes. I say made the squad. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the preliminary squad. Uh, there's a lot of continuity. There's a lot of players there that we saw at AFCON, a lot of players that we've seen represent uh, Bafana Bafana in the past year or two. Um, also, the, the new additions, you look at uh, Siabongangezana, we spoke to him a few weeks and uh, a few weeks back and he's been doing so well. He's, mm-hmm. he's won the, the, the title that side. You know, you look at Relefuni Mufukeng, who is probably the best young player in the league at the moment if we look at the, the criteria mm. um you, you look at uh Tsehofas Mabasa for me I feel is the one big omission <laughs> because if you're the top goal scorer in the league and you you've you've done it at two different teams mind you he, he did it at Morocco Swallows he's doing it again at Orlando Pirates now different sets of players still managing to score the goals you look at the game that we played against Nigeria at AFCON we, we struggled to, to to finish those chances that the few chances that we created he's a player that is currently finishing chances chances for fun so i feel like he would have added something different to this to the team but mm-hmm. on the balance of what i see on on, on paper right now with the preliminary squad I, i'm really happy with it mark mark I are think, you there um, i think it's, it's uh, again i have to agree with you so um i love that you know youngsters are being brought into the squad that have shown themselves and have performed this season so they've been given a chance and that's what you want to see. That's all you can ask for. And um, I think uh, that one big omission would have to be Mabasa. I think he he's done exceptionally well this season. Um, needs the scoring charts. And um, the fact, as Biso says, that he did it at two different clubs uh, goes a long way. And so I think he'll be gutted uh, by the fact that he didn't get a call for this preliminary squad at least. Um, I think he was worth, uh, you know, he put his hand up even for the final squad, never mind the preliminary squad. So uh, very unfortunate that he doesn't, but I'm sure, you know, the coach would have his reasons. Uh, but uh, in general, when you look at the team, uh, I think uh, a very balanced team and a team that uh, has got a good blend, you know, looking uh, for experience uh, while at the same time looking to the future as well. Nadim, are you going to just agree? Should I move on? I think it's scandalous that um, Mabasa is not in the national Jeez, team. Jeez, scandalous even. Yeah, it's, it's actually wrong because that's what makes people not go to, go to support Bafana Bafana because Bafana Bafana, the coach must always try to unite the team because the way he does it, if you are saying the best player, Pirates, the top goal scorer in the league, the striker that has been on form is not fit enough to be in the 36-man squad, pretty much, even if you are not going to select him, 36-man squad. He's not. You don't even want to put him there. It shows that this squad is not, I always say that it's not selected on merit. It's based on loyalty that the coach knows these players or whatever. I don't know how, who selected the squad, but if the coach is doing it, it's actually wrong because we, we have seen a poor what attendance. What do you mean? We have seen a poor attendance of Bafana Bafana. Do you think Paris fans are going to go to attend the team if you, he started by saying, now he put Bavuma, which is good. It, it, at first, it, it became public and said the best team in the country. It, all their players doesn't deserve to be in the national team. Fine. Chiefs were doing then, badly. Yeah, but they're not, then why are they the best team? How are they the best team? Oh, historically, they are the most supported okay. and all those kind of True. things. And then now, we are the best striker in the PSL, the guy that's scored more goals even from the beginning of the year, 
or the beginning of the season, the one who's been scoring goals in and out, Mahoba, when last did he score a goal? Or even if it was offside for that sake. So <laughs> I don't remember. Can yeah. I tell you what my issue is? Yeah. My issue is this. Here's a coach that's done something that hasn't been done in a very long time. He's got the public back supporting Bafana Bafana. And I think judging him on, on one omission this deeply, I think that's a... a no, no, no. It's like you, you are selecting the English squad. You don't select the top goal scorer in the English Premier League and he's British. It's actually wrong. You can't do that. The coach, I don't, I don't understand. What he, it's like you want us to talk more about the squad announcement than Bafana Bafana if they're going to beat Nigeria. Yeah, but can, it can never be perfect. I don't think he could ever select a squad that pleases everyone. No, but it's not about pleasing anyone. We only play, just select the best players in the country. The, like Zwane, we know the story of Zwane. Two years, he felt Zwane was not good enough to pin the squad. We saw what he did in the Afghan. It's the same coach who now puts Zwane in the squad. So, I mean, I, I, sometimes you feel like he knows what he's doing. But then I realize he doesn't know what he's doing because you are saying Zwane, you don't want to put him. Then you call, recall him again. So, like, Mahoba, when that did he score a goal? Libasa has been a school that is not selected in the squad. He doesn't deserve to be there. The last time he scored a goal, I think it was in August. I mean, I, I, I'm sure. What do you make of Lyle Foster being in the squad? He's a, he's a top striker in, the, in Central Africa. If whatever was me- keeping much of the national team, now it's fine. We need him because, I mean, to play in Nigeria, you're going to play against Victor Bonifaz, Victor Osime, Chukweze. Those are top, top strikers. You need someone like Lyle Foster because he's the best player at the moment in the country by virtue of playing in the English Premier League. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it. Uh, you can share your views on everything that we're talking about on 060-552-7303 on your WhatsApp and call us on 86 Let's move on to the next story. Kaiser Chiefs are going to dominate from now. Uh, left the best for last. Itumil and Kune. And I, I want to read it, actually. I want to read it as it was written. I don't want uh, to, to put words in Kaiser Chiefs. This is from the Kaiser Chiefs X page, right? Mm. Kune to be honored for 25 years of service on Saturday. 25 years. Incredible. Itumel Kune is set to be honored ahead of the team's final home match of the season. The fixture against Pulugana City promises to be an emotional and celebratory one as the club, teammates and supporters say thank you to one of the most decorated players in Chiefs history, Mark. I mean, if anyone is deserving of that kind of honor, Kune has done exceptionally well. He's been an amazing club and country. Um, and so definitely you can understand why they want to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a parting of ways of any sort, but um, if it's just a case of honor for his great service to the club, he definitely deserves that. He deserves uh, a benefit match when he does retire. He deserves so much for, for everything he's contributed. He's, he changed the face of goalkeeping in the country, um, and so he has uh, been a, a prominent figure uh, for, for the longest of time. And, He's going to be loved well into his retirement years. Nadim? Yeah, Kune, for me, since the 1996, in the, in the PSL era, is the greatest Kaiser Chiefs player ever. He's the greatest. If you look what he has done, I mean, what, what, this is one goalkeeper who actually took over from uh, Ro- Rowan Fernandez and Brian Baloy. What he did at Kaiser Chiefs, I don't think any goalkeeper will ever repeat it. That's why now they're struggling even with goalkeepers. You see now, Brendan Peterson and Prosper Vuma, he deserves it. It's I don't know if he's going to retire or join another team, but whatever they are doing to Kaiser Chiefs, uh, Kune, he deserves a great stand farewell because he's been a best goalkeeper. For it the feels team. like that, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. We know that for a fact that his contract is, re- is expiring end of June, and the team did say it's his last contract with Kaiser Chiefs. But of course, Kune still wanted to continue with Chiefs. We know that for, a, for a fact that they are pushing much of Kaiser Chiefs. He's not doing that willingly. It's not like he says, guys, I'm leaving Kaiser Chiefs. They are pushing him out of the team because they feel that he's no longer, uh, they do not, no longer want to continue with him. He still wants to be part of the team. He did say it publicly before he saw it in October last year that he still wanted to be part of the team. But it is what it is now. It's going to maybe play. And I think his exact words were around about um, nobody else can tell me when it's time to retire. From there, you can see the friction that even in, within the management of Kaiser Chiefs, there were those who were on the side of Kuna, but it looks like there were those who were against him. They were much stronger because now they are doing a farewell for him without him saying he's leaving Chiefs, without him talking about retirement. I don't know if it's because I believe Kuna is still good enough to play for another team, but not a title winning team. Yeah, I think it's it's a case of my uh, like we've already said th- there's this um talks of the fact that he might be leaving or rather as no, it's definitely, said, leaving. It's definitely leaving. Yeah. You know. So it's just a case of 
rather honor him while he is still at the club, you know, so that whatever happens in this uh, mm. transfer window, at least you give him the proper send off. He, he is celebrated in the right way that he should be. I mean, this mm. is a goalkeeper that he has. I think almost 350 appearances for the club, almost 150 clean sheets, or over 150 clean sheets in that time. Mm. That's an incredible record. You know, 2013, he was... The, over the, how many yeah, clean sheets? 150. I think it's, the actual number is 152. Impressive, yeah. You know? Um, really? For Bafana yeah. also, if, if you were to extend it to there, I think he has something like 42 clean sheets in almost 90 games or something like that. So he's he's done so well for himself. 2013, he was the player of the season. There is all this Only conversation right so. now about Ronan Williams or if he should win it. Kevin Hunt was saying a I mean, goalkeeper should have not, should have not won it that way. But he still won it. Mm, yeah. So that 2013 one, you know, it, it's 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 so beautiful to see what he has done at Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. It's it's, it's good though that they are giving him this send off yes. before. Uh, Let me score. take you on on that one. Ronald Williams feels that a goalkeeper should be as eligible as any other player to win a player of the season. Yeah, Andy, it's so difficult to say goalkeeper must be the player of the season because there is a goalkeeper's awards. There's no like strikers awards worldwide. We know that. So if you are saying a goalkeeper must now become the a best player. I was thinking about it, like that the, 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 the best goalkeeper in the world, obviously, is Real Madrid Couture. How can we now say he's the best player in the is world? Is he not eligible to win a Ballon d'Or? He is, but can we say he is the best player? He is, he, I know that Gavin Hunt, the coaches are voting in this thing. I, 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 I always feel against it when Gavin Hunt said hey, you shouldn't win it. You'll joke, go from Guana because Gavin Hunt said a goalkeeper should not win this award. But come to think of it, the more you see the role of a goalkeeper in a team and compared to other players, 19 I think, matches, 14 clean sheets, I think six it's fair goals that, conceded. I come on. I think it's fair that they give, there's a goalkeeper award, then there's another player's award. Just like. Let's hear from Ronwin. I spoke to him during the week. Yeah. This is what he had to say. I don't understand. I don't understand when people say that because we're part and parcel of the team. You know, um, I have never, ever, ever seen a game without a goalkeeper. But I've seen a game without <laughs> striker, midfield, and defender. So goalkeepers are probably more important. They as important as, as the ref. I haven't seen a game without officials as well. Mm. So if a, a goalkeeper gets sent off and we don't have subs, we're not going to play the game. Maybe we need to start taking goalkeepers serious and because yeah. what you're saying, Nadim, do you know why it falls through the cracks for me? Yeah. You're saying there's a goalkeeper's award and that's where they should be awarded. There's also a midfielder award. There's also a striker's award. No, Ballon d'Or doesn't have those. No, hold on. Award. I'm talking yeah. about here. PSA. There's a striker's award, which yeah. is the most goals. Yeah. There's a midfielder. There's a defender. But all of those players are still eligible for player of the season. In the PSL, since they've... We're talking PSL. This in is the PSL. PSL, since they've introduced that award, I honestly think a goalkeeper shall be eligible like anyone. When Kuna won it, there were strikers out at mini clips of arts were not existing. So now I honestly feel the goalkeeper should contest like anyone. Okay. Because if you look at Williams, without him, some of the games you'd say like he's a game winner. That's how good he is at Sundown. Right. No, I'm glad we cleared. cleared. Now, 1836, it's the big one. Kaiser Chiefs have been shopping for a coach. You know, and uh, this, I must be very honest, this is the tightest lid and I've had my tentacles out, my tentacles out everywhere trying to figure things out. They've done a very good job of keeping a lid on people they're talking to. But there are two names that have surfaced this week in the news. And it is a coach that is already in South Africa, a coach that, as far as you know, education and football is concerned, is one of the highest um, 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 educated in football in the country. And that's Sia Dramovich, who is currently at TS Galaxy, brought here by Tim Sugazi, who believed in him like we couldn't believe. And then there's also Alexandra Santos. The two of them front runners at the moment. Piso. Very interesting names, Ma. I mean, um, l- let me start with Alexander Santos first, uh, coach of Petro de Luanda. Um, currently, he, he's on, on, on course for a three-peat. They've won the last two league seasons. Under him. Under him. And right now, they are leading that, that, that league. Um, I think there's only four games left or something, and he's in the lead. Mm. So it's, it's, he's a good coach, you know, in, in the sense of what he has done with Petro de Luanda. But then if you look at his history before that, it's a lot of um, youth coaching. He coached in the third tier in Portugal. He's, he's actually Jose uh, Pizarro's guy. You know, he was Jose Pizarro's uh, assistant coach at 
at Braga, uh, at Porto also with Saudi Arabia. He, he's always been under Jose Pizarro, the, the former Nigerian That's not, that's uh, not a bad person to be under. Exactly. He understands exactly. the African continent. See, and, and the fact that he's coached, at, uh, he's been assistant at all these big teams in Europe, like uh, Porto and Braga, th- those are big teams in the, in the European game. So I- in that sense, I totally understand it. I mean, if you look at the season uh, in AFL, the league and, and Champions League, they've played 35 games in those competitions. They've scored 59 goals. They've only considered 14. So, Jeez, that's an incredible stat. Exactly. So he, he's, he's really good um, in terms of setting up his team. He plays a 4-2-3-1, which is nowadays the, the, the more um, balanced uh, formation that you see in a lot of teams. So it's, it's Guys, good I must tell you, I'm looking at Bisa right now. This is all <laughs> in his head. He's not reading any of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the top of his head. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, so it's 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 good what he has done there. The only issue that I've always said with the Kaiser Chiefs is that if you come in and you 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 don't have a history that the fl- the fans know, mm. if things don't go well as soon as possible, they can turn on you really quickly. You see, so that's the issue that he would face. A Siad Ramovic, on the other hand, I can understand why they, they, there is this romanticism with mm. him and Kaiser Chiefs because you look at right now, there's been all this talk about him versus Rulani Mukwena. You know, he's he's gotten to the final of the the, the Culling uh, Cup uh, w- where they lost to Estelian Bosch. He's done pretty well this season. He's improved a lot of players uh, also this season. The only issue with him, though, is that TS Galaxy isn't really the biggest of teams, you know, with all due respect. So if moving to Kaiser Chiefs is a different step altogether. But he has proved that he is able to, to, to improve players and get the best out of them. So it's two interesting choices. Mark? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, uh, Andile. And it's always going to come down to exactly how much, how badly uh, Kaiser Chiefs want uh you know, to improve the team and to improve their status. Uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the coach from Pedro, uh, he's wanted by by Widad and and Simba as well. So it's not like you know they just have easy picking. So Alexandra Santos is, is a wanted man purely because of what he's done with Pedro. And so you know, Chiefs are really going to have to dig deep. And then the demands of the coach is that going to be another stumbling block again. What are his demands? Does he want to come with his own technical team? What are they willing to allow? Um, you know, all those kind of things. You know, it's it's it's. Ooh, Mark, are you there? All right, we think you have lost Mark there. Um, we're going to try and get him back uh, so we can continue the conversation. Nadim, it's on to you now. Two coaches that are touted to be um, in the talking stage. <laughs> talking stage with Kaiser Chiefs. It's Sia Dramovic who's currently um, out at uh, TS Galaxy and Petro de Luanda's Alexandra Santos. Yeah, Petro de Luanda is from Angola. It's not the strongest league in Africa, so... I'm not sure he's the right guy to... Chiefs have been suffering for too long. They just need a guy who can kickstart the mission. Someone who's familiar with South African football who can change things to happen now. I think they, they should be looking in the likes of Steve Barker. I like the Sid Ramovich one because he's been in the PSL for the past almost three seasons now. He's done well with TS Galaxy. If you look at players like Mojere that he has developed, given him Simango, Obas, Butele is who's now a pirate. You can see that he's the kind of a guy who can easily improve players. That, for me, that's a sign of a good coach. If you can take a player from NFT like Mojero and make him into a PSL star, then I think a good coach. With Alexandro, I'm not sure that's what Kaiser Chiefs want. I think they should not. They should look away. In fact, he's not the kind of a guy that will. Why? He will still need to study Three this leagues in a row he's in Rwanda. In Rwanda, that's in Rwanda. Rwanda league you can't compare to the DSTV Premiership. Is not is one of the is not the strongest league in Africa. If you have done that in Egypt or I mean, look, Tunisia, can, can we look at when he's played continental football? It doesn't matter. He's not won any continental title, so it means nothing. Whatever he's done in Rwanda, the fact is, even if you can, if he has one eleven titles in Rwanda, we're still gonna say he's not the right guy because it's gonna take time. And and at that, at that time, uh, already Sundowns will be twenty points ahead of the league, and Pirates will be pushing Stellenbosch, Cape Town City. I think the guy, the right guy, Sid Ramovich, is a guy that I think he can improve the team because Kaza Chiefs, you know that they are not big spenders. They don't sign the, the, the maybe the most uh, experienced players in the league. 
Uh, Sidra Movich is the kind of a guy where they, he will improve the players what is there and he will assist them to maybe sign one or two players who can take the team forward maybe to be in the top four. Because Chiefs now, they need the coach not to win the league because they are far from winning anything. They just need the coach who can assist them to be in the top four in the league or, or maybe secure the top eight. Because now even the top eight the Chiefs is something serious. They are no longer even guaranteed the top eight. So with the one who coming from Rwanda, Portuguese history... I'm not even sure if his English is good. Then it will come and it's going to take time. For me, it's not. They, they must just look away. Hmm. Mark, I don't know if you finished your point there before we lost you. Uh, I'm not sure where, where exactly you got, uh, where I got to. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, it's two very interesting uh, coaches. Uh, I think two coaches who've shown themselves, Alexander Santos um, at Petro has done some good work. Uh, you've seen how Petro's competed. Um, and based on that alone, you can understand why the interest is there, the passion, the desire. Um, again, it, it, it's about, you know, what, what is he asking? Uh, because he is uh, an in-demand coach. Uh, from what I've heard, like I said, the likes of Widad, the likes of Simba also offer his services. Um, and so ultimately, you know, what a Chiefs willing to do to get their man, is he the right man for them? I think he's definitely a great option. Said Ramovic, uh, like I was saying, I think he's uh, really grown into the league. He's become acclimatized to South African football and he's done really well. Um, if you look at his time with, with uh, I love a coach who understands, for me, uh, maybe it's a bit of bias because that's my thinking as well, that you build a team from the back. Um, and he was very solid defensively. He's always solid defensively. He's got, again, this season, one of the better defensive records in the league. Um, so you don't concede, you can't lose. Um, so Chiefs need to rebuild and they need to, you know, establish themselves as a solid uh, presence in the in, in, in the country. And so he is someone, I think, who can do that. Um, he knows the league well, he knows the fans well. Uh, I think he's acclimatized well. And so I think both these coaches, uh, it, it's a great choice to have if these are the two choices that they ultimately are left with. Well, that's it as far as uh, the newsworthy is concerned. Now we're going to look forward to this weekend and talk about the games to come and bring on up to Jabu too. Let's take a quick break. Your calls and WhatsApps are going to be, uh, let me see, maybe at about uh, 18.50? Exactly, 18.46. Uh, just before we go into this last part of the show, it's, it's only right that, because uh, I see that Amazulu have released a statement now. I was waiting for them to do so, but uh, the president, Sandile Zungo, of Amazulu Football Club, has uh, released a statement sending his heartfelt condolences for the passing of um, Joel Mfanafuti Fire Fire, who passed on uh, early this morning, I'm hearing. So, to Mdeni Wonke wa Mazulu, no Mdeni Fire, my heartfelt condolences to all of you on the loss of this great legend of Amazulu and the beautiful game. All right. Uh, your voice notes, please, on uh, 60 <laughs> Call us on 86 Let me begin perhaps with Opta, because uh, this weekend, penultimate weekend of the DSTV Premiership, mm. all the games playing at the same time. Three o'clock kickoff for everyone. Um, there's some notable big games here. You look at perhaps, uh, you have to look where uh, Pirates is. They're playing TS Galaxy. You have to look at also uh, where Stellenbosch is. They're playing Mamelodi Sundowns. Because that second spot is what they're vying for. But Kaiser Chiefs playing Pulukwana City. Two of them uh, just under each other there for the top eight as well. So important game that is. And you've got to look at uh, the bottom there with Royal AM as well. Another huge clash there against Chipper United. But let's go to Opta. Opta's got some stats for us for the week. Opta, always great to have you. Welcome. Evening, Andy Lake. Good evening to you and the listeners and all the guys in the studio. Let do my analytics, um, I mean, helping me out, man, every single day. I appreciate the work that you guys are putting in there. We're talking about top eight permutations. What do you have? So, Andy Lake, what we have is that four teams have already qualified for top eight. That is obviously Sundowns, Stellenbosch, Orlando Pirates, and De Kukune. Yes, goes Kukune! <clears throat> Which means there's four places up for grabs for top eight. And at the moment, going into the penultimate weekend, as you say, nine teams still stand a chance to grab those other four spots. So, so what's what's way, interesting here is from fifth position at the moment hmm. all the way to 13th, all of those teams can still get into the top eight. Fifth all the way to th- 13th, all of them can still get to top eight, some with a very slim chance, hmm. like Swallows and Amazulu will need a lot of favors. But then other teams like 
TS Galaxy and Supersport and perhaps even Cape Town City, they're just one result away from securing a top eight berth. What about Kaza Chiefs? They play Pulukwan. Indeed. So that leaves actually one spot that's really up for grabs. If Galaxy, Supersport and Cape Town City win this weekend, they qualify for top eight. That leaves one spot up for grabs. Chiefs and Pulukwan, eighth and ninth at the moment. They battle for that top eight position. Good thing for Chiefs. Two good things for Chiefs. Number one is that they've lost their final home league game of the season just once in the last seven years, winning four times and drawing the other two. Hmm. Sundowns and Steelies, um, it's the top two there. Sundowns have already won it, but they want to be invincible. Steelies want a secure position too. They want to be invincible indeed. This is Rulani Mukwena's 60th domestic game as sole Sundowns coach. He's won 42, drawn 16, and lost just the one game. That's 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 quite a stat, huh? And that that one is quite a stat. Delis. One, one loss in 60 games. Gee whiz, that's something else. Mm. Uh, we're going to get into Defender of the Season in just a bit, Optus. So I'm going to ask you to please just hold on because I want the guys to have their say first before you. But before we go there, guys, uh, Defender of this. No, no, let's start with the games. What game are you looking at, Piso? Um, the the Steelers and Mamelodi Sundowns one. My, I feel like there's so much on the line in that game. You know, Mamelodi Sundowns, like like uh, Opta just said, are chasing that invincible record. Steelers, on the other hand, as much as everybody expects Sundowns to not lose this game, Steelers also can't afford to lose it or, or, or to draw points because Orlando Pirates is doing so well and could, uh, you know, secure that second spot. Nadim? Yeah, the interesting one for me is Swallows. I saw Swallows beating, beating Stellenbosch after, from, for the first time since October. So, and they're playing Super Sport United. You feel like this Swallows team, Musanya Tama, I always give credit to Mokan Mamila for how they survived last time. But now Musanya Tama is the sole head coach. Credit to him. I think he might upset your Gavin Hunt. Mark? Oh, I, I think, think some, some interesting matches on the go. Uh, for one, uh, I, I want to see Richard Bay, Cape Town City, because, um, you know, obviously we know that Spurs are already gone from the league and obviously this is a crunch weekend for Richards Bay. They can't afford to lose this one because if Rail AM beat Chipper again, I think Chipper have been doing really well. So, you know, that's uh, a tough one for Royal AM themselves. But for me, the relegation battle is still hot, hot property. That playoff place, I guess, <laughs> is what's uh, trying to be avoided. And so those two games specifically, Royal AM, Chipper United and Cape Town City versus Richards Bay. Who do you have as your top defender this season, Mark? You, you want one name? Give me one name. Uh, it's a tough one. A tough one. Um, again, you know, whenever you mention a Sundowns play, you say, but it's Sundowns. You know, why well, can we put Sundowns in there? But they have only conceded nine goals this season. So, Grant Kekana, uh, for me, is definitely a contender, and his name should be amongst those. Uh, obviously, when you look at uh, his stats uh, in all competitions, it's uh, 36 games played and, you know, four goal involvement, three goals, one assist. Uh, well, I should say four goals in total. Um, but then another name I just want to throw in there is Piwe uh, Maslango at TS Galaxy. Um, you know, he's played 24 games in the Premiership, scored seven goals uh, and got two assists as well. So that's nine goal involvement in the league alone. Um, so definitely, I think probably someone that won't be looked at, but probably should be looked at because he's one in you know part of one of the best centre back pairings in the league. Piso, give me one name. One name would be a Grand Kekanama. Uh, if you look at the league alone, 17 games played, there's 13 clean sheets. I mean, they've only considered two goals with him on the field this entire season. So for me, he's he's definitely right up there. Nadim? He also scored three goals, also Grand Kekana. Besides being a defender, he can contribute offensively. It's been solid. It's one of those smartest defenders you can find in the league. It's always like sometimes he doesn't shine like other players, but he's one of the solid defenders. For me, he is the best defender this season in the PSL. Opta, you did some uh, digging on defenders. What did you find? Uh, indeed, Andy. The with defenders and stats, uh, they're not good friends. It's very hard to judge defenders based on statistics. Mm. Like the world of soccer stats is still trying to figure that out because defenders are opposing, they're doing opposing actions to the flow of the ball most of the time. Um, we had a few Sundowns players in the shortlist. 
um, Grant Kekana or Bill Madiba in there. The issue we had as well was that they've played very few minutes when it comes to the league. Um, you're looking at about 1,200 minutes for Kekana, for example. Whereas a player like, let's say, Dino Van Ruyen from Stellenbosch, he's played 2,100 minutes in the league. And he's been a captain at Stellenbosch, ever present, and fifth for minutes at Stellenbosch altogether. Only one player in the league has one more tackle, if you want to include those for Dino Van Ruyen. We've also shortlisted here Tabo Moloisane at Stellenbosch. Almost 2,200 minutes, the second most for Arsenal players at Stellies. He's 12 clean sheets, if you can't for him. Uh, the joint third most in the league. And he's in the top 10 for tackles one as well. A surprising name that popped up was Tolo Matuludi at Polo Guan City. Almost 2,500 minutes, first in the league. And 13 clean sheets. Only Ronan Williams has more. He's also first in the league for Jewels one and first in the league for interceptions. He's been a good figure for Polo Guan City as well. But as I said at the beginning, stats and defenders, they're not very good friends. Well, up to Jabu and stats. Marriage made in heaven. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on. Let's hear from you now. Voice notes next and then taking maybe one or two calls. Drop us a voice note on 060 552 7303. Waking up, down two turned up. Hey, Andy Lema, ah, it's the only thing that's on the page. I don't know whether I'm so or not. A uh, sport amplifier number one sport show last month, mm. but according to the favorites in me, you know, Lenienza will have a studio when the fake is sometimes okay. They say the outlet Lenny Lena will have a nadim. Footlaw was no cool, madam. Who can so love and have an anger cool of a fit? Yes, key punk tanza is a relative dialogue metro FM. They were in Nenza and a call. Oh, Nen Basaga, the friend of the neutral. I know I'm going to need that, but it's true. Well, there sure. it is. It's playing. Guys, here's the thing that you must know about Mamadori Sundowns. If you go back in the history of this country from 10 years ago, you listen to any radio station, you could not but listen to everything about Kaiser Chiefs. They were the most dominant. They had the most flamboyant players. They had the best players. Everybody that was touted to be on radio and TV was said to be supporting those teams. Sundowns at the moment, you can't ignore them. Whether you like it or not, you can't ignore them. You speak about Bafana Bafana, the dominance in there is sundowns. You go statistically on any position, it's going to be sundowns. You go to anything football at the moment that is in South Africa or the African continent, sundowns are the leaders at the moment. We speak Kaiser Chiefs, but it's hard to speak positivity on Kaiser Chiefs at the moment. You speak of London Pirates, we did at the beginning of the season. We said if there was a team that's going to contest sundowns, it's going to be Jose Ribeiro and the Solanda Pirates team. So no, we don't fear or run away from people that accuse left, right, and center. It is when you say to me that this is biased. If you say, saying this is biased, then we can have that conversation. And we can pick on the moment that you're talking about and we can talk about it. You know, that was a personal attack on Nadim. That was a personal attack. That wasn't an attack on what he said. Let's talk about what is being said. Let's talk about the statistics and then we can have the conversation. And no, don't worry. We don't <laughs> run away from anything. We're here. But it's interesting because it says I support Orlando Pirates and then... But I said Pirates are not going to win the league. So and you what do support them, what but is you said it, they're not going to win the league. What is it that he says, okay, if you support... But anyways, Kuluma, play the next one. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening, Andy. Hey, Look, you know, I do not agree with uh, what Nadim is saying. Mm. Uh, about pirate supporters and all of that. I mean, it's not about pirates here. It's about the national team. And the 100%. coach has shown over the years that it doesn't go by popular things. You know, he chooses the players that suit his style of play. I agree. You know, and for that position, number nine position, it was clearly between Mavasa and Arenas. And Arenas has been blasting in goals too. He's a top striker and it suits, it suits the style of, of the coach. So, this thing of, uh, you know, clubs and all of that, you know, why shouldn't Paris supporters go and support the national team? It's the national team, you know, for crying out loud. I agree with you, 100%. Yeah, but the attendance has been poor. We've seen that since... But it's been poor before him. No, it's been poor since the coach has been attacking the big teams. No, it's been poor way before him. But there were times where... 
during like Bernard Parker's time, the national team was well supported. When last did you see a sold out Bafana Bafana match? I'd, I'd love to know from you because, for as far as I can remember, it's been poor for a very long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so it's not Hugo's fault. But it's not, he- it's not helping also. Oh, do you want to take a call quickly? Let's go for it. Uh, not Mark. Vumza. Vumza's in East London. Hey, Vumza. Yeah, I'm all happy, Ma. Hey, no, good, man. Yeah, I'm going to make it quick, eh? I was um, surprised that my team is agreeing with a lot of us when you say that uh, Mabasa <laughs> must be on the national team. I was thinking that you will be all to disagree with that. You. Oh, Vumza, uh, I was surprised as well today. Very last, very quickly, one, uh, Nadim. Yeah. Um, one, Jimmy. Thank you so much, Vumza, in East London. Let's take um, Jimmy there as we make... Oh, but I Marco. don't understand. What does it mean? I mean leaves. What does it mean? A top striker and the PSL, I will say, is, must not be in the national team. Jimmy! Yeah, Jimmy. I want to ask you a question, my brother. Do you think for the that she's into a higher coach? Because before the game in the five three fell, I think we'll coach him can in the thing, but kono wanore who select a man, kiman nan kimatamaya. Or am I right or am I wrong? You are right, they should hire a new coach. You're asking, do you think they will hire a new coach? I don't think so. Maybe. No, definitely they will hire a coach. The chairman did say in that interview with PBK that they are looking for a new coach. They will hire a coach. That is guaranteed. My second, my second question. Do you think we're a Vuma or some sort of squad thing? The way I perform Manga thing? Uh, it doesn't matter if they or not because it's not going to play. We know the number one goalkeeper for Fana Fana. But I think he has done enough to be called as among the top four goalkeepers in the national team for, for South Africa. Well, that's all we have time for. Mark, Biso, Nadim. Uh, you guys must come out and uh, tell us who you support next week so that we have this conversation from a declared point of view.